What is up everybody? Today, I'm gonna to show you a really cool tool that I created I, that's going to assist you in creating really unique modern layouts. Let me show you real quickly what it is. You can click on a link in the YouTube description to see this tool. Um, and if you just click, I uh, this basically if you click generate, you're gonna get a bunch of crazy weird layouts in the CSS grid and are all random. And based on how many cells you see here, you can change this number. So if you wanna change it to six or so, you can do that and you can just click generate to come up with a bunch of different potential layout ideas and think of it kind of like scaffolding essentially. My buddy Michael Melwich, which is Melwich, I think that's how you spell his last name, a fellow UI designer here on YouTube and Twitter, I uh, mentioned that UI design is kind of just about moving rectangles around and that's essentially what this is. So I'm gonna use this technique to show you how I'm gonna create a really cool, unique layout from scratch in this video. Let's get started. Now wait one second, if you're interested in UI design, you might be interested in taking those designs and making them work and function in the browser. If that's the case, you should definitely check out the front-end developer career path at scrimba.com. They've recently launched their front-end development career path, which is a collection of courses that cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and much, much more, as you see. It's over 75 hours of awesome content, there are hundreds of interactive coding challenges, and it's all geared towards helping you go from beginner to someone that's hireable as a front-end developer. So click here on the top link of the YouTube description to get up to 50% off on the front-end developer career path at scrimba.com. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna leave this at five or six or so and just hit generate until I find a layout that I like. Now, Sometimes you'll see big empty gaps just because of my crappy coding and I was rushed. <laughs> uh, but we can always just fill those in anyways. So I'm gonna click generate until I find something that just speaks to me that I think, hey, I would like to try making a layout out of this. That's actually pretty cool, but it's, all, it's also pretty uh, cookie cutter as well. But it's still, you know, it would still definitely work. Um, so I'm just gonna keep on clicking these until I find something I like. All right, so this is one that I found that I thought was pretty cool. So what I did is I screenshotted just the grid portion um, and I, I basically have this in a group where I can just toggle on and off like that. Now there was um, an area where it was, this is one of the ones where it's just blank. So I just used the rectangle tool just to create it and you fill that gap in. And so I also have a frame around it with a good amount of white space, which I think is important just for to, to have room to breathe around around the edges of the layout. And so now what we'll do, I'll, one thing I'll also do is we're, we're gonna take this group and we're just gonna change it to about 40%, um, just so you know there's enough opacity to where we can see the actual individual grids. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I usually start with was, is just the headline. Um, and obviously it helps to have the content beforehand, but no big deal if not. I, I have just some, some headlines and subheadlines already thought of. Uh, off my other monitor, but we can also use uh, Lorem Ipsen as well, which we'll, which we'll, uh, we will do. So the absolute um, sickest layouts, that's my first <laughs> headline right here. Now it, it, I do already have a uh, pop-in selected, it's bold at size 54. I think that's the size I want with the leading of 68. Um, and that fits in there pretty good. You're gonna see though, um, we're gonna overlap some elements probably in here. Uh, you can certainly do that. There's no rules. It's just a general guideline for inspiration. Um, we're also gonna duplicate this maybe for a subheadline, which is typical across many different um, kind of uh, landing pages and websites and stuff. Um, let's change this to like around 25 and we'll change this to regular. All right, and then this time we're gonna use that Lorem Ipsum stuff. Let's change this to auto for the letting and let's, I. Uh, right click, Lorem Ipsum. You can go ahead and install that extension if you wish. And then maybe we'll put it right right here. All right, that's fine. So what are we gonna do with this middle one right here? By the way, we could toggle this on and off and this is what our layout looks like so far. <laughs> Exciting. All right, so maybe we'll move this up and find a different way to define the bottom of this container or this grid cell as it is. So I this, particular grid right here, pretty small. Not sure if you can fit text into it. Maybe we can just uh, make it a rectangle as is and fill it in with a solid color or a photograph. So it can just kind of be like a graphic design based element that's there to support the structure and the interesting nature of the layout itself. 
So let's um, choose rectangle and we'll just kind of just follow it exactly as is. We can hide this for now. Um, it's up to us if we want to add rounded borders, I kind of or corners rather. I think I like that, so we'll bump that up to around eight. And then, yeah, do we want it to be a picture or photograph, or do we want it to be a solid color? We could just make it a watermark. Could just be a really light gray. Whatever. We can always change it. Not a big deal. We can also extend this outside of the of the grid itself that we've created, and that's fine too. Um, so let's just leave it like that, and we can come back to it if we want to change it. Um, in the future. So also, what about the other grid to the right? What are we gonna put here? I don't know. Um, oh, let's go back over here real quick. Maybe we could put this at the bottom. That way these two are kind of defining that row going across. So if we hide this, oops, wrong one. All right, so now we have kind of some space here. How do we fill that in? I'm not sure. We could take like an arrow the arrow tool, kind of just push this down there, change that to one for the thickness, and get that centered up between those two elements. All right, so that's kind of cool. Now we've kind of defined also a column going here. So right here and right here, we've defined a situation. So it looks cool so far. All right, Shift R will get rid of the rollers. Um, so over here, Maybe we can have like a big just blob of text. It could be a picture or it could be text. It could be both if you know how to work with that. Um, let's just take this, duplicate it. And I I kind of want this to be smaller text. Let's just do size 18. And then also let's drag it down. We, we can, you know, because this is our own layout, we can kind of just drag this as far as we wish. So right click, plugins, and we will go to Lorem Ipsum and auto generate. Now, just having a wall of text like this looks like crap. So let's create some paragraphs here and just to space some things out, maybe a small one right here and then maybe one larger one right there and then we'll delete the rest. All right, so one thing, I think maybe I wanna stick with the same font size for this and this element. So if this is 18, we'll change this to 18 as well. I mixed, there's this, all right, change that to 18. All right, so we can always play with stuff with the type uh, going forward, not a big deal. Maybe we can increase the letting just a bit. We'll take both of them, just the keyboard up arrow key. I think that's good, right around 30 for a size 18. All right, now it does kind of feel empty up here. I kind of want to, want to create the, you know, a, a uh, that invisible depiction of this top line right here somehow. So maybe we can put in like a subheadline right here at the top. All right, so Shift R, let's bring that back. Hit T and actually we can just grab this and duplicate it. And then I uh, will just put um, Orange is Gone Wild. That's one of the other stupid subheadlines I've I've come up with. So what's wrong with this? I one problem is it's, it creates an issue with the visual hierarchy, uh, typographically speaking. Uh, these two are styled exactly the same, so it's kind of weird, you're not sure where to look. So we could solve that by changing this maybe to extra light. All right, so that kind of works. Now your eye is still kind of drawn here because it's much bolder uh, than this over here. We can do something cool like this. We can even right click and bring to front and just kind of overlap it because this is a low contrast element and you could certainly overlap type on top of low contrast elements. Now one thing that's kind of strange is this empty space here. We could possibly put like a border that goes all the way across or we can make this just large enough to where it kind of uh, matches the very right portion. There we go, uh, right around there. So now let's get things uh, evened up and I think what we could do is, we could do some, uh, I forget what type of text justification this is called, but if we come over here and we click this option, which is text align justified, we can kind of create a nice solid uh, portion here. So let me bring this back. Okay, so we can probably stand to increase the size of this. There we go. And now we have a nice kind of a column that is created and defined by this area right here. 
All right, so that looks pretty good. And if you wanted to, you could uh, bump this up. All right, looks good to me. Now, I finally, we have one more grid area down here. Notice how we didn't utilize both of these individually. Completely fine, it's up to you. It's not set in stone. So I think maybe we'll have a photograph here in the bottom cell, just you know, quite big. And actually, we, it probably should align to the bottom of this type, not necessarily the bottom of this you know fictional thing that doesn't exist really. All right. So what is this? This is eight pixels for the border radius. So we'll keep that consistent. And we may actually want to increase. Notice how how close these are together, but then there's a lot of space here. We want to have the same distance, essentially. So maybe right there, and then we can right click and go to uh, Unsplash, and we'll just type in um, purple. I don't know why, I just wanted purple here. Uh, maybe we could use that. All right, we can go into the image and change it to crop and then move it up so we can see more of that. That's kind of cool. All right, and there we go. Uh, just look at that. Now, I could, we can create a bunch of iterations based on that first starting point. So for instance, if we think this is drab looking or just boring, we could select it. Uh, come on, select it, what's happening here? There we go. And then we can go to Unsplash. Um, let's type in orange, because we're talking about oranges here. I don't know, maybe we could use something like that. Some type of abstract picture. So, and you can keep going and going and going by making iterations, not just to the colors and stuff, uh, but also to the structure. So for instance, we could take this down, because it is quite large. Uh, let's right align that, there we go. All right, so now it's kind of, centered pretty good here. Maybe we'll go down to 49. There we go. Now that's looking good. So this could be an option as well if you didn't want to overlap that element. Um, we could take it a step further. Uh, maybe we'll overlap this element. Right, uh, right click and bring to front. Maybe make it a little bit larger. I think maybe right there, that could work. Um, bring this down, there we go. Now those two are lined up properly. We could take this, maybe scale this up. All right, so that's a potential option. One thing that's frustrating me is the excessive amount of white space beneath everything. So if we just move this up, there we go. And then of course you could have even a lot more fun um, by creating another a variation, perhaps that's like a dark mode. I don't know, now I'm just having too much fun. I, it's, it's real easy to change this type. So like, let, let's make the, this right here white. This will be pure white. These two elements will be almost white, but not quite. Whoa, that rhymed. I, we can reverse this idea here. All right. And then finally change this up to white. And there we go. Look at that. So we've just created uh, a really unique layout that I guarantee you, you've never seen out in the wild. And we did it by having fun with this little generate layout options. And you can just come up with an insurmountable uh, amount of potential layout ideas using that very cool technique. Oh, one thing that really frustrated me, I, I, I just noticed it, it really annoyed me. Look at this uh, little white space here. That should, this should be right in line with that. There we go. So now things are kind of structured a little bit better. And of course, because I am so anal about this type of stuff, I'm gonna take all of them and make that adjustment, push it over right there and there we go all right i had to save face there because that looked a little strange i uh, yeah not too bad all right everybody hopefully you enjoyed that you should definitely i i actually encourage 
somebody out there who's a developer to take that little project I made and really expand on it, make it better. My code was sloppy. I put it together in about an hour. So definitely, if you do that, mention me on Twitter. I want to see you expand this tool and make it even cooler. All right, so as always, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.